What's up everyone, this is Wham! Flimsycom, and I'm here to review Tron Evolution for the Nintendo DS Let's do this thing. So in the main menu, there's a single player mode, a multiplayer mode, extras, and the game mode, or Disney game mode, if you prefer to call it like that. And I'll explain all these things in the future, but first I have to talk about the main story mode in single player mode. So in the story mode, you can customize your character. You'll be a male or a female, change your facial um, structures of your face, you'll make it small around, a little bit taller in height of your head, a little bit taller, or a little bit more compressed. Change the color of your skin, change your hairstyle. You can also rotate your character by using the L and R button, but well, for all, this is a nice touch of the game, but there's not many options. Only four choices for each thing, and also you can add different colors, but there's only four different color types you can choose from. You can also pick an outfit from four. There's only four things, so there's not, not much customization in this game. So if you've been looking for customization to make your own strong cattle, this is not the game for you. Also, if you didn't already know, this is an RPG. Not a real hack and slash game, it's full of puzzles and, well, it's mostly touch-based combat as well. Look over here, you um, use the touch screen to flick your um, frisbee, um, or light disc, all around and hit enemies. There's various different types of combos, you can hold the L button to block a disc being launched at you. But you can also spin your stylus in a circle motion to um, throw your your disc around like a hula hoop and protect you in battle for a few seconds. But you cannot walk while doing so. Some puzzles are in this game instead of full on combat like if you find a pad like that it would charge you with um, a light energy from whatever color it is. So like I just picked up there, that was white energy. White energy would be useful anything that's white. So if it's a uh, white platform or uh, arrow pad, you can use the white pad to energize you and walk across something that is white. It will also help you to power up any uh, buttons that need to be powered by a certain color. Each one like white, purple, uh, blue, and various, I think it look like yellow, there's a, wet, a yellow one, I believe there's a red one, I don't remember, I never played this game in a while. And you cannot replay certain levels in story mode, it's just full on play the game, and then once you beat the game, you gotta restart from the beginning if you actually want to replay the game. So that's a problem to the game, but it's an RPG, it's what to be expected, and there's only one safe slot too. So see, like there, I powered the um, the bridge with the white energy. And now that it, button is open. The way you um, activate a button is by touching it, with or tapping on it with the touch screen. But I was an idiot here, and I forgot how to use it, and I kept hitting it. No, all you have to do is just tap it once with the stylus. Stop it, Wham. You're making yourself look like a fool. Just tap it with the stylus and move on. No, it won't open, Wham. Do not go over there. You gotta type it. Tap it once with the stylus. You can do it anytime now, Wham. You're making yourself look like a fool. No, don't go talking to that guy again. Go back. Go back, Wham. You gotta tap it once with the stylus. Go tap it once. You can do it! Use your brain, Wham! Use your brain! Uh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're very smart, Wham. You're very smart. Okay, go back up. Go back over there. Woo! Yeah, go hit that. And go over there. And do something. Anyway, also, by the way, you have to um, have the white energy in your suits in order to activate a button that has white energy coded into it. So if it's a blue one, you need to have blue energy in it, which is the default energy. 
You also um, can use your um, white energy, your purple energy, whatever energy you got in fighting combat and it'll help you um, beat up enemies faster. Uh, so there's upgrades in the game like this speed disc which will allow you to aim at multiple targets at the same time. But if you got how to use it, what, the way you use it is you hold the L button which is the block thing and once you're in the block position, hold the L button while tracing with the stylus and a line will appear to help you um, get it. But I cheated and I just kept flicking it because I'm a plot flicking. Even though you're not supposed to keep flicking, you're just supposed to use that special power up. And the power up is really easy to use. Trust me, it's pretty solid. Just trace the line and immediately, boom, you're done. Well, I was an idiot and I want to show how poor I am by flicking the disc at both targets at the same time, or near the same time, in order to break the game, basically. But it's not really breaking the game, you could do it if you want. Here's an example of what to do with the tracing thing. Hold the L button, and then trace over your counter to the target. Make sure it's a straight line, and you can, or a curved line, and make sure it doesn't hit any walls, and boom, it hits your target. So, yeah, you gotta make sure that it doesn't hit the walls, and you also have to make sure that uh, you hit the, the designated targets, and... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Just chase the line. It's like a maze. There's also these kind of puzzles where you gotta connect the uh, the, t the soccer board together. If the colors don't match, then the whole thing is ruined. And you gotta do it again. And look, I just got no upgrade. Now this upgrade allows you to regen health by collecting hearts. And well, you can find hearts in various um, chests, maybe in a few um, bodies of dead. Uh, people you just killed from the computer. Anyway, so what you do to activate your regenning health is by clicking on the icon of the frisbee on the bottom right hand corner of the touch screen and actually the top right hand corner and click on it with your stylus and once you did so a icon with the heart will pop up and then just click on that icon and immediately you start regenning health. This is useful if you're low on health and or just stink at puzzles and keep falling off the map. And look at this, yet another one of these circuit board um, puzzles. There's a whole lot of these you need to do in order to beat the game. And it gets tedious sometimes and it gets more and more difficult the more you progress. And I just got the dark blue power up and now you gotta trace like that. See, that's what I was meant to do before with those two uh, uh, um, button things. And now I had four, so I had to use it no matter what. Those yellow um, platforms will kill you almost instantly if you touch them. So do not go on anything that is yellow and is all pixelated and stuff on the bottom of the platform. And I just made a new bridge with the energy. There's also small little cutscene things that go into the uh, dialogue, and there's a whole lot of dialogue. I have no idea what the story's about because I'm too lazy to read. If I am playing a game, I'm not gonna read. There's also a quick tutorial on every little mini game or various mini games that they have in this game, in the story mode. So this is the tutorial of the light cycle mini game. There's also three other mini games. There's a tank mini game thing where you can play a deathmatch, a capture a flag, a king of the hill kind of thing and basically I'm doing a deathmatch here and you use the touch screen to shoot and you just keep tapping to um, shoot at your enemies and you aim by dragging your stylus across the screen or just tapping in various spots. You can also pick from a heavy, a special and a light. The special is all around good, it has a decent um, defense and it is uh, more, uh, a little bit more maneuverable than a heavy. But it's not as fast as a light and it's not as uh, defense, it doesn't have the best defense as like a heavy would. But I picked the special because hey it's all around so it's all good. But yeah, if you prefer to um, be able to dodge every bullet, pick the uh, light. If you prefer to have better defense so you can take more hits, 
pick the heavy. But this game is quite good, it's actually well made, and it's probably made after the fact of the game, or maybe it was made for the game, and they just decided to piece together a pretty generic RPG into the game. So I prefer just playing the mini games, but I'm terrible at the mini games, so don't expect me to do a whole let's play just me playing every single mini game. But if you really barely want me to, I guess I can practice and try to play the game sometime in the future. But these graphics are pretty nice for a DS. So in Light Cycles mini game, there's a deathmatch, a last man standing, and a capture of the flag. And you also pick maps for all these um, uh, mini games. So you can also pick a color if you really want certain colors, and there's various other vehicles you can play as in um, Light Cycles. I prefer the classic model from the 80s uh, movie, so that's why I picked that one. But <laughs> you can pick any um, design you want, I believe there's only four of them, and uh, you can pick any color um, you want in any of those mini games. I forgot to mention that before, but yeah, you can be the blue um, candle, the green one, or the yellow one. Depending on your color in this mini game, uh, it'll design your vehicle to be a slightly hint of blue, and as well as trail behind a blue uh, line. This is like that uh, 80s or 70s, I forgot which one, but I forgot the name of it, but it's like some uh, game where you just draw a line and try to be the last line standing. If a line hits your line, then you, that line dies and you win. If you hit a line, then you die and, and that line wins. So, basically, you can die from your own line. Um, you can jump over lines. You can use it. You have to use the touch screen to turn, but you can also do quick turns by using the directional pad. Quick turn to the left, to quick turn to the left. Quick turn to the right, to quick turn to the right. Or just hit the directional pad to white, go white, and stuff. Also, if you hit the forward or the up button on the directional pad, then you will speed up. Hitting the L button in the back, right, uh, left hand side of the. I, hit, I said white. Yeah, I don't know why I left from the right. My, the, hit the left button on the right hand side, because I'm stupid. No. So, hit the, hit the left button to jump over a line. But it takes pretty good aiming in order to, uh, timing in order to actually jump over the line. It takes some experience to do so. So, this game is actually pretty easy if you get used to it, but it, it can be really challenging because these AI actually do pick up a mean fight in these various minigames. Except for the last one, which I'll be talking about very soon after this. So in this combat, you only can do deathmatch mode, but there's various maps you can pick from, and when picking a design, you can only choose from a male or female, and it's pretty a generic model for either the male or the female. All black hair, and all white. So, they show you a brief tutorial for each of these minigames if you didn't already realize, and basically it's like playing the story mode thing, except for you're in an arena and you gotta beat up these guys. I'm terrible about fighting in this game, because it's pretty hard to um, aim in this game, but uh, you can get used to it if you play it long enough, but I, I only play this game for like 30 minutes and then I just stop because the game actually flows while recording and then I try to re -pick, uh, pick up my um, save file, but I delete my file to show a new game to show you the how to customize your account and stuff, but yeah, uh, my s file wasn't saved, so I had to start from the beginning if I was going to record again. So I decided not to, so I only got 30 minutes of gameplay footage to show you. So, yeah, it's basically controls flick the stylus on the touchscreen to hit a enemy, use the directional pad to walk, and you cannot use your upgrades like the bomb. Yeah, there's an upgrade of a bomb disc where you throw it and it explodes. However, I wasn't able to record gameplay footage of that because it's pretty late in the game. And, uh, I, yeah, I didn't record much of it, just 30 minutes. So, I'm terrible at this game, as you see on the bottom right hand corner of the top screen. I got zero uh, kills, and the green guy it got like five. And look, the green guy won. And you cannot control your name here, so I'm Yop, Yop, in that 
minigame. There's also um, Recognize 01, which is like an arcade shooter, which um, you can actually control the direction you're um, going through. Here you can't not uh, you cannot um, like choose what color I mean uh, design you want. You only can pick the color. Anyway, <laughs> this you can pick the direction where you're gonna uh, fly through, and you can aim using the touch screen. This is only a survival mode, or whoever got the most points in the end. Anyway, this automatically shoots at whoever you're aiming at. You can shoot at your enemy to make sure the enemy loses health and falls to the back of the pack. Being in front of the pack has its advantages and disadvantages. One being that uh, you can uh, go through any trap force and uh, disable it and make sure that the person behind you uh, gets hit. However, there's also disadvantage, like if there's a wall in the way that you have to destroy, you may hit into that wall because you've got to destroy it, and no one else will destroy it for you. Points vary from 100 to 50, and so on and so forth. Hitting that yellow target would adjust said obstacles, like if you saw right back there, I changed the direction of the obstacle either from the left hand side to the right hand side, that was a wall that you had to destroy, um, hitting that icon um, changed the, the obstacle from being open in the middle to only open on the left hand side, here they destroyed another wall. Anyway, yeah, you use the directional pad to move to the left hand side, the right hand side, the bottom, or to the top. This is actually very easy, and actually, I really like this game. Anyway, you can, in multiplayer mode, you can play this game, the um, light cycles game, the tank game, and the uh, disc combat game. But you cannot do co-op in story mode, but why would you want to? The story mode isn't that interesting, it's pretty much a pretty generic RPG-esque game. But yeah, this game is pretty fun, also there's green health packs uh, in this uh, game and in this game I actually <laughs> I'm a pro this game I end up beating all the um, AI because the AI is pretty stupid in this game this is a very easy game to beat if you know what you're doing and uh, yeah you cannot change your name in this game and I did not pick this name but Yope 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 is that generic name that they always give me when I'm playing this but it's better than the other names that they give the AI, like Slave. Who wants to be named Slave? I don't know. <laughs> so, yeah. I could keep rambling on about this game, but I actually really like this game. If you want me to do a Let's Play this game, but there's only one map, so there's not much of, uh, <laughs> what, gameplay footage I can show you other than this. And there's laps to it. it you, anyway, enemies can get um, eliminated because if you shoot them too much or if they hit too many obstacles, they're low in health and they die. So yeah. So D Game or Disney Game or is in every single DS uh, Disney game to date. I'm not sure about 3DS Disney games, but for every DS game, there's um, D Game or D Game or is pretty much a social game, kind of like Facebook or Twitter, where you can hang out with friends and you don't have to own the same game in order to uh, chat with each other. You have to own a game that has D Game or in it. Which is pretty cool, but I don't know anyone who owns it, a game with D game on it, and I don't know anyone who uses it, and I don't really enjoy it, and I didn't um, do gameplay footage it because it's kind of a waste of time, and I'm not really sure if anyone's actually online anymore, mostly so it was only out. Also, extras, there's um, concept art from the game and credits, so. You can look at the credits if you want. And look, Yo Pop One, which is me. Or oh, Yope Yope. <laughs> That's a stupid name. Well, anyway, yeah. <clears throat> so you can look at concept art, which you unlock throughout the, the game and play it. So, out of 10, I'll get his game. Hmm. hmm. Well, gameplay wise, the mini games are better than the story mode. The story mode is pretty much a generic RPG. Which I don't really care about. I only really enjoy RPGs. RPGs are my least favorite form of video games. I, I do not enjoy text-based RPGs. Let me rephrase it. I don't really enjoy text-based RPGs. I do enjoy normal um, other RPGs like um, Skyrim. That that's the kind of RPG I actually like. 
But if it's a text-based one, I don't really enjoy it unless it's Pokemon. Pokemon is a great um, text-based RPG, but other ones, it doesn't catch my attention like Final Fantasy. Don't hate me, but I don't really enjoy Final Fantasy. I just bought Final Fantasy VIII for the PC recently, and uh, I'm not really enjoying it very much, no. But hey, it may become more entertaining later on throughout the game, but I highly doubt that. So, yeah, gameplay-wise, um, it's great for many games, not that great for story mode. Uh, the PSP um, version of this game is actually completely filled with these mini games. The whole game is the mini games, and it has a um, more realistic art design than this, and better graphics, obviously, because it's the PSP. It's supposed to be the PS2, but portable. Uh, sound quality wise, t the music in the the <laughs> the menu sounds sort of staticky. Like the music sounds. Great, it, it has very nice atmosphere to it, but there's like static going on in the background. I don't know why, but it's there, maybe it's compressed. It's a compressed file, they do that to fit it more stuff or content into the game. But it, listen to it, it just sounds staticky to me. I'm not sure if it sounds staticky to you, but just listen. So I guess I have to do a rating here, uh, out of 10, I give this game, uh, a 7 out of 10 if you didn't see the movie and you just hear to play some awesome minigames, because these minigames are fun and addictive, but they're challenging, if you haven't played them for a while, you, you won't be able to beat it, but um, if you do keep playing it, then Hey, you'll get the hang of it, and you'll probably want to keep playing it. I actually really enjoy these mini games. Just I, I haven't played it, this game in a while, so I'm not that good at. It. But uh, if you have seen the movie, then it's probably an eight out of ten for you. But this is like a different story. This is like um, I'm not sure if this is like a prequel or maybe a sequel to the second movie. But it's one of those. I I'm not paying attention any bit whatsoever to the story of this game. Not a, one second of this game have I ever actually read the dialogue. Because there's so much dialogue in this game, because it's an RPG, but uh, I, I'm not someone who likes to read in the games. I just like to move on and play some games. I I don't have time for reading. So I'm, I'm pretty sure this is a prequel, but mock me if I'm wrong, it's probably something like a sequel. And look, another puzzle. These puzzles are challenging and sometimes they're easy, sometimes they're not. Depending if you like puzzles, then this is a game for you. If, if you don't like puzzles and you find them challenging, then this is not the game for you because most of this game is puzzles. Actually, it's more of an RPG and then there's some puzzles put into it, but there's a whole lot of puzzles you gotta stop and just do like heal. There's another puzzle. I just completed a puzzle, now I have to do a second one. Again. And like I said before, they get more and more challenging. Like there, there's a blue one and a green one. If you actually connect the blue one to the green one, then you fail. And stuff. Also, there's one last thing I forgot to mention. Um, there's achievements in this game. And once you unlock achievement by pretty much most of these, uh, actually all these achievements is pretty much just um, progression throughout the game. So if you um, beat a certain level, you get an achievement. And what you're saying about the achievements is just an achievement? You're wrong. These achievements actually come with prizes, and the prizes are uh, different costumes or uh, gear you unlock for D Gamer. And pretty much these things are nothing. It's just something you customize your avatar on D Gamer. So if you want um, the Tron suit on your avatar in D Gamer, pretty much you can put it on as soon as you beat the game. Anyway, it, it doesn't do much, it's just that when you're texting or tweeting someone, well, it's tweeting in the game, or there's no talking or chatting with a mic like Skype, it's you typing and there's an avatar being shown to the person you're talking to. But anyway, uh, your avatar will look like Tron. You can customize it and people will see that you beat the game Tron, 
or at least played most of the game, Tron and Lock and Achievement. So yeah, if you like Tron, then do, this is the game for you. If you didn't like the m movie or didn't see the movie, then uh, this could be a game for you if you just like those mini games from the 80, um, the 80s movie, but uh, never actually. Um, well, if you actually wanted the, the a game based off the 80s movie, you can get this game, or you can get the other one from the Atari, but the Atari one is not great. And you can also get the console version. I'm pretty sure the Wii version is like this, exactly like this game, except for it has a slightly better graphics. Um, the Xbox 360 one and the PS3 version is more of a hack and slash platform, which I think I should prefer, and I probably don't buy sometime in the future. And PSP one is just a collection of mini games, but it's awesome graphics. If you enjoy the mini games and just want mini games, get that one. But if you only have a DS, get this. And if you want this game but with better graphics, get the Wii version. Now I show if the Wii version is 100% exactly like this game but with better graphics. But I'm pretty sure, not 100% sure, but I'm pretty sure. I saw a trailer for the game and some gameplay. I'm pretty sure it's exactly like this game but better graphics. But I could be wrong. Also, it won't have D Gamer, so if you're looking for D Gamer, get this game. I guess if you really bad, you want D Gamer. It's not something you actually want. So anyway, I'm done here. So you might wait this video, comment this video, and subscribe. I want to see more videos. Me, Wham, and Sam. We'll see you next video. And I hope you enjoyed this review of Tron Evolution for the Nintendo DS, which I gave a rating of. A 7 out of 10 if you never heard of Tron and just looking for a game that has nice mini games or a nice RPG. This is kind of a generic RPG in my opinion. But if you're into RPGs, you may think better or something. But I, I'm not really good at um, reviewing RPGs because I, I, I don't have any opinion of RPGs. I just don't really find them that, that fun unless it's a Legend of Zelda RPG. Or it's not a text based RPG or it's Pokemon. Okay. <laughs> so I also gave this an 8 out of 10 if you're someone who is nostalgic about the original Tron movie or if you just saw the new Tron movie that recently came out and enjoyed it and um, wanted a game based off of it. I'm not sure if this is a prequel or a sequel to it, but it's one of those and. Um, yeah, I'm not really sure anything about the story, so don't ask me because I never read the text. Never once read the text. I have to do a playthrough and just read the text. So I'm done your piece. Hope you enjoy this review. Done.